Welcome to the fourth episode of the Swiftly Spoken Eras Recap, a countdown to the Eras Tour. In this series, we're recapping all of Taylor Swift's eras leading up to the Eras Tour, which we're inching closer to with each episode. These videos are intended to be something like a mini crash course through Taylor's discography that will lead to the celebration of her career through the Eras Tour. Today, we'll be going over the Red Era, an album and an era that is extremely well loved in the Swifty fandom. Most importantly, ahead of her next headlining tour, we'll be looking at which songs Taylor could choose as a standard set list from Red, as well as which she has never played live before and may want to debut. With the additional tracks from Taylor's version of Red having cemented its legacy, we'll be trying to take a guess as to what we may see from Taylor's fourth album on the Eras tour. In our previous episodes, we've spoken about Taylor's three albums that are generally classified as being country, and though Red was originally labelled under the same genre, over time Taylor herself has become to regard it as the start of something extremely experimental. A patchwork quilt of emotions and an exploration into different genres of music that would eventually lead her into a fully-fledged pop of 1989. After having proved herself to many detractors during the Speak Now era, Taylor had initially continued to write and create music with Nathan Chapman, her trusted producer at that time, following the same pattern as they had when composing Speak Now. However, she felt somewhat uneasy and wanted to try and explore outside of her comfort zone, so she decided to push the country genre as far as she could, branching out and challenging herself as she created her fourth studio album, Red. The first song written for the album was All Too Well which over time has come to be known as Taylor's magnum opus, and although the song marked the tone in regard to the deep heartbreak and toxic love that Red explored, the album as a whole was vastly eclectic, combining catchy pop hooks with electronic beats and country ballads. All of these fused together under the loose concept of songs that portrayed feelings Taylor thought could be described as Red. These included strong emotions ranging from jealousy, confusion, intense love, and deep heartbreak. The shift in sound and Taylor's seeming gradual abandonment of the country genre angered many country purist fans who saw Red as too experimental or a crossover that should never have been classified in the country genre. Despite the many changes in her style, Taylor's confessional signature songwriting still bled through into her fourth studio album, becoming a focal point and regarded by many at that time as some of her finest lyrical work. In terms of chronology, as mentioned, Taylor began writing most of Red during the Speak Now World Tour, and it was the last leg of the tour that Taylor decided to cut her hair into bangs and begin to straighten her tight curls more regularly. This may seem like a really small thing, but it was a shift in aesthetic that went along with her departure from her younger, more naive self into a slicker look that would be the staple during the Red era. However, the start of the era can be specifically pinpointed to the 13th of August 2012, when Taylor hosted a live chat announcing the name and details of Red, as well as releasing the lead single We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. The album was set to follow in October of that year. The choice of this lead single, as well as the singles that followed, truly marked her departure from her previous country hits, and even though a country remix version of We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together does exist and was released, there was no doubt that Taylor had expanded and made her way out of just being considered a country artist, bound to the constraints of that particular genre. We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together debuted at 72 on the Billboard Hot 100 after only two days of tracking. The next week, it rose to number one, becoming Taylor's first ever Hot 100 number one and cementing her as a true contender on the charts. As mentioned, the following singles, including I Knew You Were Trouble, 22, Red, Begin Again, Everything Has Changed, The Last Time, all showcase the diverse nature of Red, which wasn't well received by all at that point in time. It's safe to say that because of this, Red's reception was mixed, even though it still made its mark in Taylor's discography, being placed at 99 in Rolling Stone's list of 500 greatest albums of all time. Red's original legacy also includes being nominated and losing a Grammy for Album of the Year, forcing Taylor to change her approach to her music drastically and pushing her to create something much more sonically cohesive. It's safe to say that the general appreciation for Red has massively grown over time, the era and album itself being slightly looked back on with a bitter sweetness, even by Taylor herself, who would often compare Red to 1989, and surely must have felt the weight of the tough commentary surrounding her songwriting and dating that came to heat during the Red era. 
Even so, Taylor's version of Red has served as a major redemption arc for the album and era itself. Many fans and critics alike have finally proclaimed a newfound appreciation to the re-released album, which included nine From the Vault songs and the legendary 10-minute version of All Too Well, the album's crowning jewel. Taylor's version of Red was a celebration of her fourth album from a mature perspective, with a fuller, clearer picture told. Taylor finding herself in a more comfortable and stable place both professionally and personally and a much more open audience when it comes to the genre shifting in the album. And as cheesy as it may sound, Red may have just been ahead of its time and Taylor's version has been a way for it to be showcased in an entirely new light. In terms of performances of the Red Era songs, back in 2012 and 2013, Taylor headlined the Red Tour, which included a general set list of songs such as State of Grace, Holy Ground, Red, You Belong With Me, The Lucky One, Mean, Stay Stay Stay, 22, Starlight, Everything Has Changed, Begin Again, Sparks Fly, I Knew You Were Trouble, All Too Well, Love Story, Treacherous, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, as well as some secret songs that she switched out each night, the ones from the Red album that she did perform were I Almost Do, Starlight, Safe and Sound If We're Counting It From The Era, and Sad Beautiful Tragic. And in terms of other Red songs that have appeared across Taylor's other subsequent tours, for example on the 1989 World Tour, I Knew You Were Trouble and We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together were included, however there was, they were both majorly reworked. In terms of the Red Tour as well, there was also an inclusion of We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, which was matched with This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things. Additionally, on the Rep Tour, uh, in the acoustic set list of the tour, other Red songs were included, such as 22, All Too Well, Babe, I Knew You Were Trouble, Begin Again, Better Man, Come Back Be Here, Holy Ground, Red, Starlight, State of Grace, The Lucky One, and Treacherous. Finally, during the Lover era, though obviously we didn't get a tour itself, we did get some performances which majorly did include songs from the Red album, such as Holy Ground, Red, and All Too Well. As we have done in the previous episodes in this series, we like to take a moment to also look at the statistics from Setlist FM regarding how many times Taylor has performed certain songs from each era live. So, from the Red era, she's performed We Are Never Getting Back Together a total of over 220 times, which makes sense as it is the lead single to this album. Other songs that she's performed quite a lot of times include I Knew Were Trouble, which stands over 200 performances, Red at over 100, and 22 at just under 100. So these are the big four from the era that she has really focused on when performing live. Conversely, there are some songs that she's never played at all live. So these include from Red, The Moment I Knew, Girl at Home, Nothing New, Message in a Bottle, I Bet You Think About Me, Forever Winter, Run, The Very First Night, and Sweeter Than Fiction, if we're including it from the Red Era. With that all being said, now we're going to head into the part of the episode in which we discuss our thoughts about what we've just mentioned. These statistics, the songs that haven't been played ever before, the songs that have been played many times throughout the eras, and we'd like to discuss and try and take a guess as what we might see on the eras tour. So with all of this information in mind, What are you thinking, Cameron? Are there any standout songs that you think have a place on that tour, no matter what? I think what's interesting with Red is previously we've looked at the stats and basically the songs that have been most played who we've always kind of been like, yeah, they're the ones. Love Story, You Belong With Me, Sparks Fly, things like that, our song. However, with Red, I think it's very different because of what we mentioned earlier with Red kind of having like a resurgence and almost like a reappreciation and certain songs now taking more of a limelight than they originally did in the era i actually don't think that we'll possibly see some of those top songs the ones that i'm feeling is 100 percent all too well and i think we'll probably get the 10 minute version as taylor herself has said that that's kind of a standard it's literally now become one of her biggest songs ever a crazy fan favorite I think that it will kind of take up the acoustic side. And I know that it's 10 minutes and that will take up a lot of time Mm -hmm. on the set list. But I think if Taylor reduces down the speeches (laughs) and the general chit chat, which I love, I do love it. But I think if she does kind of reduce that down a little, I think that it will. I I just pray I would love to hear that song live. Yeah. um, And I would love for it to kind of have its moment. And I do think it will, what with basically almost every performance she's done that's just been her and not like a special guest at a kind of artist, another artist show. She's basically only really performed all too well in the last year or so. Mm-hmm, that's true. So I, and the 10-minute version. So I'm feeling like that's a definite. 
I almost feel like we're never ever getting back together is not going to be on the set list. Like, I just don't right. see a need. I agree with you there. That? I do think Red is an album that she could easily pull off leaving the big singles out. Kind of like we discussed mm. in our last episode about Speak Now, where we said, I yeah. don't know if, you know, mine would, would see, there wouldn't be really a need for it. We Are Never mm. Ever Getting Back Together, as we've just mentioned, has been performed over 220 times live. You know, we, we've kind of heard it enough. And I think Red has mm. other songs that do have been shoved into the spotlight and I would love to see them, you know, come exactly be sung. So for example, All Too Well, of course, fan favourite, and I do think it's gonna be there. I know it's like a lot of people have been discussing it. Ten minutes, it's such a long period of time and it's such a yeah. crowded show already to take up. But, you know, it's not exactly ten minutes because we know that we could just reduce, yeah. We can it reduce could kind of it a cut little to like bit. eight and a half minutes. Yeah, I think you, I do. If think you really kind of reduce elements, down it is. 100%. It's what we discussed. It is her, in a way, her songwritery magnum opus. It's, I don't know. I I do think it's going to be there, at least um, at least once. But I'm kind of I think, seeing it as a staple. I really am. And I think that she'll cut down things like you know in previous tours she's kind of done the walking through the crowd thing, mm. which takes up a good five six minutes. Um, so I feel like, you know, if you cut down things like that because the kind of layout of the stage is 1989-esque with yeah. not really having a kind of uh, like not real stage, stage in terms of having to mm. cross. Yeah. Whereas obviously with like Fearless, she, she kind of appeared in the crowd, walked through the crowd as well from the B stage. Speak Now, she walked through the crowd. Red, again, was on the shoulders of um, a dancer, went through the crowd and obviously with Reputation also kind of went through the crowd in between the B stages. So... I don't think that's going to happen. So I think they're going to... I'm thinking that they're probably going to cut down on certain things that maybe have come a bit of a tradition, like with like, the walking through the crowd to kind of save time to allow for more songs. Because um, there's such... Their set list is going to be so overcrowded anyway. But I really do pray that All Too Well's on there. But yeah, in terms of We're Never get, Ever Getting Back Together, I know it had its moment on Reptor. And I always think that Red was a little bit robbed on the Reptor. Because... Basically, yes. all we had was we're never ever getting back together, and it yep. was so as a standard. It was like it was only a that. sprink, yeah, and it was like a sprinkling of we're never ever getting back together. It was barely, you know what I mean? It was like two lines of the chorus. It yeah, was it was there, but it wasn't really the song. There. Yeah, yeah, it was almost like you're not sorry on uh, back to December mashup. Yeah, on the, um, it's there for a couple uh, of lines. Speaking of words, where it's so like you yeah, you say bad. like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very minimal. And then obviously, you know, she did perform others, but yeah, standard set list, that was it. So I don't think that's going to be on there. I knew Trouble, I'm not sure. Obviously, it had its moment on 1989, mm -hmm. didn't on the rep tour, but then was kind of brought back during the um, Artist of the Decade performance in yes. the Mother era. Yeah, which we um, are using and in a lot of these episodes to kind of point towards these specific moments like blank space yeah. like shake it off like yeah. which we'll discuss and in in the artist exactly. of the decade she didn't go for we are never ever getting back together she went for i knew you were trouble she went for i knew a trouble and kind of gave it a little it was kind of like a 1989 world tour remix lm-esque and i feel like it would be something similar mm -hmm. again not in its full capacity but maybe like the artist of the decade performance but i'm not one i'm not a hundred percent on it one song though that I do think is very likely is the song Red. Yes. And there's multiple reasons for that. Oh, I, One, I, I can I can guess yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can guess. One is obviously delicate. And uh, not delicate. Daylight, sorry. Mm -hmm. Delicate is a totally different story. Daylight obviously with the Lover Era again, it was brought back at the um Paris City of Lovers show. And obviously the song Maroon. Yes. Like it would like come on. It's gotta be Maroon. It's gotta, Maroon. right? Like it, it has to. Like that. That's like 100%. And Red is like, it's the third most played song anyway off of the album. It's pretty well known. You know, it's not like it would be. Oh, like yeah. It's not a deep one. part. It was a single in oh, the, no. at some point. You know, it yeah, It makes exactly. sense. It would, yeah, the connection it has to both Lover and to Midnight, it can, a massive mashup can be done there, which is something that we'll oh. have to discuss in the future as well about mashups. Oh, but I, I do agree with you. I think that out of those that we've spoken about, I knew we're trouble. I'm iffy, but kind of leaning towards Same here. maybe. But mm. red, I I'm really singles. am feeling. It might yeah. be there. It might be there. All too well and red. Yeah, all too well and red. And obviously, then what's interesting as well as mentioning the Lover era is that during the Lover era, the red certain red well red as an album almost had like a 
it had like a pre Taylor's version, like yeah. a resurgence. Because obviously yeah. it had a massive resurgence during Taylor's version, but it was given a bit of a spotlight with like the Radio One um, performance that Taylor did, where she performed an acoustic version of Holy Ground, which was very left of field. Like I did not expect that at all. So it's interesting that those two were given, and weirdly, I could kind of see Holy Ground having a bit of a moment. I'd love that. Like I feel like, I feel like she would do something similar. Because what's interesting uh, is I, when you look I, at previous, I, when you look at when you look at like previous era, eras. So like for the nineteen eighty nine World Tour, for example, Taylor basically when she played Love Story pre nineteen eighty nine World Tour, she played the like pop version. Mm. She played it at Radio One, and she played it obviously at the iHeart Festival. And obviously, she did this with Holy Ground. So I feel like on the Love of Fest. Holy Ground was going to have an acoustic moment, like on a piano. Like I just had this weird sixth sense that it was going to be included. Yeah. So I feel like it might. And obviously, even randomly, it was like brought up in the, you know, the like 2016, 2017 performances at like the Super Saturday Night and the Formula One. Holy Ground had a moment then. That's true. Which again is, was quite random. So I feel like weirdly, my picks are the songs that were performed during the love era holy ground red and all too well okay and that's so interesting be, that's that's my three and i knew trouble at a push mm. and if so it would replace holy ground they're my kind of three okay. i feel like it'd be three from red what about you yeah i'm i'm not sure about holy ground i definitely do agree with you that it i i could see it at the lover fest that never was mm. i could see it there but here again i think obviously she's gonna have to work through a lot so I'm feeling I am leaning towards red with some mashup. I'm leaning towards mm. all too well 10 minute version because it is what it is. But other than that, yeah. I don't know. I'd love to see it, but I don't I don't quite know just yet. And before we round off, I do want to discuss some of the songs that have never been played live before. So, of course, we have all of the vault songs, which I'll get to in a second. Mm. But then we have the moment I knew and girl at home, which I I can't see reappearing i can't see a certain one of those i can't see girl at home basically <laughs> ever being performed the fact she basically changed it up because people were yeah. busy no one likes the song that she knew that no one would be mad oh. at the fact that it was changed up like i know that's harsh yeah. but it's the truth realistically why else did she change it up well obviously because it was technically a demo but you know yeah but even still but um but yeah that ain't ever making an appearance I don't yeah think. but then we do have the vault tracks which i think are interesting to discuss because a few of them are features so for example yes i am feeling that at one of the phoebe bridges shows at one of the shows in which phoebe bridges is an opener we're gonna get nothing new like she's gonna bring phoebe oh, up at some point and we're gonna 100%. get it right it has to happen it has to it on the acoustic part of the set. Can you I imagine? love how I just assume ah. there's going to be an acoustic part, but yeah, we're basically just... every Taylor tour ever. Yeah. Every Taylor tour ever. She's got to bring out a piano and then she's got to bring out the, yeah. the, the guitar. guitar. It has exactly. To Literally, even not at, in the pop days of, you know, yep. rep in 1989, she was bringing it out. It's happening. And 100% at that moment, Phoebe Bridges, it, it would, Phoebe Bridges is literally going to be in the stadium. Exactly. Like, like she's going to be Surely it back. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It like makes sense. And following those same thoughts, we haven't discussed this yet, and it's something to discuss in the future or to see as it unfolds, but they may be obviously special guests, as we have got special guests throughout mm -hmm. almost all the eras. Reputation, there was a lot of special guests that, wow, they were amazing, and they really heightened the concert experience. We might yeah. get Ed Sheeran and get... <laughs> uh, everything I, has changed. I, I, X I... run, X uh, end game mashup. End game <laughs> Yeah, ex uh, Joker and the Queen. Oh my remix. gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at this point, so yeah. I don't, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's unrealistic at all. I'd love to hear Run from them together. Uh, I'm not so like Taylor. Fussed Taylor about brought him out at like Rocking Rio. Yeah. Um, on the 1989. Also, obviously, he was a massive feature in the Red Era. Literally yes. opened for Taylor and was a special guest at multiple shows. Um, so yeah, and she brought him out like during the Repetition era when she was doing like the kind of jingle gel, jingle bell ball kind yeah, of we've got Endgame. pre tour. Yeah. She, yeah, she performed Endgame with him. So I, I, I think that's pretty realistic to be honest. Like I, I can definitely see that happening. But also, what's interesting is when you think about because we've mentioned in Fearless episode about like we think there's going to be an inclusion of the Vault. Mm -hmm. and obviously, All Too Well Ten is from the Vault. Yes, but it's not really like. Even though it is a vault song, it's almost not really included in. You know what I mean? Like people don't. I guess because I we kind of already knew the song exactly, and we knew of yeah. this ten-minute version. It wasn't like a completely. Although from that kind of, you could say that 
a lot of people knew Bye Bye Baby, you know what I mean? But it's yeah, different. Yeah. It's different. It was a standard, yeah, it's different. standard thing. So, it's like yeah, a I get where you're coming from. It? Will there be any other representation? I yeah. think we're going to see it in the form of special, like special songs or special guests, honestly. But yeah. I can't Do see. You think... I bet you think about me as the only one that I can maybe, maybe message in a bottle. They got a remix see, after all. <laughs> exactly. I was thinking that because we keep thinking that the special songs are going to be like how they have previously done, which is via acoustic the acoustic set but what if she just legitimately does change up elements like even when i when i saw lord and stuff there were certain parts of her set list that like you know like big songs that were swapped you know like certain melodrama songs each night you weren't sure which one you were going to get right and do you think that maybe that could be a thing of like say oh, i don't know one night i would love it's that. style it's and the other so night it's work. the very first night I know that must be so much work for an artist like to mm. have to especially already having such a big concert and having all of these moments yeah. within the concert and special guests and this that and the other and then having like to switch out a big pr- production-y song not just Cheap an acoustic one. Oh, I, I kind of would love that because I would love to see some of the representation of these songs that haven't ever been exactly performed before which like i would love to hear a message we're getting in into night. yeah we're getting into some of the vault songs and then we, when we get into like folklore and evermore era and midnights and lover oh yeah it's gonna be a whole other conversation but yeah i i do i know that's a lot of work and it's very like uh, i don't know i would love that though i'd love to hear i bet you think about me what a mo- what a moment that could be the thing that i've always found interesting is that red songs have transitioned like beyond the red era like, obviously, the fact that the only songs that Taylor's really ever given to artists, like, you know, recently... Have been um, from the Red Era. Red song. Like, we've never had, you know, a Speak Now song given to someone or a 1989. It's only ever been Red songs, which is so, so interesting. interesting. yeah. And then, obviously, so we had Red songs transition. We didn't really know at the time. We, we There was a kind of hint that they were from Red. Because I remember Better Man, there was a slight confusion about when that was written, when it was first released. Mm. And a little bit of a misconception. And then it was obviously kind of confirmed, no, this was Red album. Yeah. And then when she released Babe, she specifically said this was originally from, from Red. Red. And we kind of knew about yeah. it anyway. Because um, the, the, one of the co-writers kind of mentioned the song previously. Um, but it's interesting, that, yeah, like during the 1989 era, we had a kind of resurgence with Better Man. Then during Rep, we had it again with babe and then obviously during lover we then had it just with the inclusion of red songs in set lists and performances so it's interesting that red really has just transcended and over time like we kind of mentioned it's just kind of got more and more appreciation and so much more than it originally has so it's going to be interesting i feel like red might have more maybe than we think yeah i think talk is so difficult because i think we're being a bit harsh on yeah the amount of songs that will be included from red because we've been quite harsh on the previous ones of like oh two three Mm. max but i feel like red might have more because because of its kind of popularity i don't know i think we're being harsh in general just because we know that we're on album number four (laughs) and we've already like said so many songs we've got another six we've got a few big pop albums to talk about and then a couple of albums that we haven't basically got performances for almost anything and then midnight yeah. still to discuss. Exactly. So it's very difficult, but, and that's why we are being so harsh and trying to cut mm. back as much as we can. Also, the point of all too well being a ten minute song, it does take up the space that's of take three, up, like, three songs. songs. Yeah. yeah. So I guess that's why we're being harsh. But yeah, and I, also, get what I you feel mean. like I feel like with the song red, the song red is going to be like we said. Oh, we are never ever going to be back together. Yeah, this like a couple of us inclusions. Nice mm. It's going to be like yeah. Loving him was red. Like it will be like maroon with just like tinges of red sprinkled through, or like the intro is red or the outro is red. Mm, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I yeah. don't think it will be like the whole song. It will be like a a mashup when it's like, oh, was that red that she just played? You know what I mean? It'll be like, oh, blink and you miss it, kind of thing. I feel like that will be its inclusion. But it's interesting. Red's like, it's so hard to pick. I can't even imagine how tough it must have been for Taylor to sit down because obviously these songs are, she has more of a personal relationship to these songs anyway because obviously she wrote them so she has her favorites and knows what she enjoys and stuff like that so it must have been even harder to sit down and be so cutthroat and be like this one this one not this Definitely. one so i can't even imagine it's an impossible task because the problem is is you want to pick the ones you like you want to pick your favorites then you want to pick the ones that are easily performed or would sound well before so it's just so much to think about so I, i'm really not sure with red but i feel like for me, All Too Well is a definite. Red is a definite. I knew Trouble maybe, and I would quite like a Holy Ground moment in there. 
yeah, I love them picks. I definitely... I'm being very harsh with the red just because of the all too well 10 minute version inclusion. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that will be there. I think red, we're going to get a little mashup. Other than that, I'm going to be harsh and I'm going to say that's about it. I know that, <laughs> that may sound terrible, but again, <laughs> I am keeping in mind that we are on album number four of 10. So there's a lot to discuss yes. still in the coming weeks. But do let us know what you think Taylor may pick. If our picks are completely off, if you think that she's going to include a lot more from Red because it is a recent Taylor's version, let us know what you think in the comments. For now, these are the most realistic guesses that we can give from our point of view. Make sure to let us know if you think that we're way off or if you agree with us. Also, make sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel so we can continue this countdown together until March in the Eras Tour. And if you want to know any extra information or when other episodes are coming out, do follow us on Instagram at Swiftly Spoken Podcast.